was in December of 1938 that two German scientists, uh, Fritz Strassmann and Otto Hahn, split the uranium atom. No one had done it until late 1938, and then the Germans did it. And that just fueled the fire of, of fear. Oak Ridge National Laboratory is a major research institution and uh, Oak Ridge National Lab has been around since uh, uh, right after the Second World War and is a major and perhaps in, in some senses the premier research institute in the entire United States and some people would contend the world. It was started as part of the Manhattan Project in 1942 well, the Manhattan Project was the U.S. government's uh, attempt to build an atomic weapon to drop on Germany to end the Second World War and resulted in the atomic weapons that were ultimately dropped on Japan in August of 1945, which did end the Second World War. And out of that grew Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This was set up originally in 19... Uh, 43 as Clinton Laboratories, didn't have the name Oak Ridge at the time, and the purpose of Clinton Laboratories was to learn how to produce plutonium, which was a radioactive element that could split and release vast amounts of energy just like some forms of uranium can. Uh, but they didn't know much about plutonium, it was an artificial element had to be created by man, and uh, they knew nothing about the characteristics of plutonium. Uh, building started in February of 1943. This facility, uh, the graphite reactor as we know it today, was um, started in the spring of 1943, completed by November of 1943, and uh, came online as the f world's first operating nuclear reactor and in this case, used specifically to produce tiny, tiny amounts of plutonium, which were recovered and then shipped up to the Metallurgical Laboratory, which was part of the Manhattan Project in Chicago, so that they could be characterized up there. And other bits of plutonium that were produced here were shipped out to Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico, where the bombs were actually designed and built by Robert Oppenheimer and other famous physicists and uh, ultimately tested out there in, in New Mexico. So the purpose of Oak Ridge National Laboratory was originally uh, to serve as a test reactor, which is where we are right now, uh, to produce trace amounts of plutonium for a nuclear weapon. And they realized, uh, I say they, the government realized fairly quickly back in 1942 and 43 that Oak Ridge and uh, East Tennessee uh, were not the places to produce vast amounts of plutonium for a weapon. Uh, plutonium is a highly toxic element. I mean, it's very, very carcinogenic, very dangerous if not handled properly. And East Tennessee was not the place to be producing large amounts of plutonium. This reactor here, it wasn't even called a reactor, it was called a pile, um, was designed simply to learn how to produce plutonium, not to produce large amounts of it. Originally, the first reactor that was developed was at the University of Chicago. And Enrico Fermi, whom we've all heard of, was the principal scientist to develop that reactor. And he did it in the uh, uh, squash cord of Stag Field, which is where uh, football used to be played at the University of Chicago. But they weren't playing football anymore. So that's where he ended up, in, in the squash courts, under the grandstands at Stag Field. And he produced the first uh, nuclear reactor and proved that a self-sustaining nuclear reaction could be created and maintained. And that's what you have to have in order to produce plutonium as a chain reaction. 
but uh, the government said, no, this is not the place to be messing around with nuclear reactors in downtown Chicago. And so we're going to buy a tract of land somewhere, and they ended up in East Tennessee buying about 100 square miles down here. And the purpose of, of this facility at Oak Ridge, it, it wasn't Oak Ridge at that time, it was just a farm communities. And the purpose here was to not only build what we know today is the graphite reactor to produce these trace amounts of plutonium, which could be used as a fuel and a weapon, but also to enrich uranium because uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, which ran the Manhattan Project under uh, General Leslie Groves, um, Groves was the sort of fellow that said, well, we don't know if uh, plutonium's gonna be a better fuel for a bomb or enriched uranium. And so we'll just produce both of them. We don't have time to try one and then try the other. And so here at Oak Ridge, two facilities known as K-25 and Y-12 were set up to produce enriched uranium. And they both produced enriched uranium, but by different methods. So Oak Ridge consisted at that time of three facilities. Clinton Laboratories, which is where the plutonium was to be uh, experimented with, uh, Y-12, which was for enriched uranium, and K-25, which was for enriched uranium. All three of these facilities were separated by ridges and many, many miles of, of distance. So that's what Oak Ridge was, but that's not the entirety of the uh, Manhattan Project. In addition, there was Hanford in the state of Washington where the plutonium was actually produced in kilogram amounts. And then the third major facility was at Los Alamos in New Mexico, where scientists there under the direction of Robert Oppenheimer actually designed and built the nuclear weapons. The University of Chicago had the metallurgical laboratory where a lot of the basic work on plutonium was done. And then there were universities all over the United States, Columbia, Michigan, Iowa State, Berkeley at California, and so on, all of which participated in various ways in the Manhattan Project. It was a massive undertaking, um, $2.2 billion, which was a tremendous amount of money during the, the war years, not so much today, of course. And uh, the money was allocated without the knowledge of Congress. And uh, even Vice President Truman didn't know about it. So it, it was conducted in secret. There were secret cities here at Oak Ridge. They had to build a secret city that ultimately ended up housing 75 or 80,000 people. And you couldn't get in, couldn't get out without going through security. We were fearful that the Germans would get access to our technology. And so uh, it was obvious that all this had to be done in secret. And it was, I mean, uh, people in the vicinity didn't know what was going on. It was a super secret project. If you were hired here and worked on the project, you only knew what your job was. You weren't informed as to what anybody else was doing, so that you only saw a little piece of the entire project and really with a few exceptions, you couldn't put together the entire story and understand what was going on. Uh, eventually, after a year or two, they actually began to produce some enriched uranium over at Y-12, and that enriched uranium was carried out of here in a uh, handbag, in a valise. Uh, on the train, it went out to Los Alamos. I mean, somebody just carrying it uh, normally. And likewise, small amounts of plutonium were shipped up to uh, Chicago where they could characterize it and out to Los Alamos where they could uh, learn how to build a bomb using plutonium. So everything was coming in, trainloads and trainloads, but nothing as far as anybody could tell ever going out. But uh, it was a, a very ultra secret undertaking and no one knew what was going on except the managers until the bombs were actually dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in um, August of 1945.
It was at that point that um, the local population here and the workers who had worked at Y-12 and K-25 and so on um, actually learned that they'd been producing an atomic weapon. And they went wild. There were dances in the streets and parties and everything. And you can still see people in the streets holding up uh, newspapers that says uh, uh, what, you know, we, we produced a bomb and the war was over and so on. Here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, or Clinton Laboratories as it was known at the time, uh, we had built this reactor and built a bunch of technology around the reactor, around uh, the effects of radiation on uh, humans and the effects of radiation on uh, the environment, fish and other critters out there. Uh, and we knew an awful lot about uh, the technology associated with atomic energy. And so the decision was made actually before the war ended in, in August of 1945 to maintain this reactor that had been built at Clinton Laboratories, uh, known today as the graphite reactor, and use the graphite reactor for purposes of better understanding nuclear power, nuclear energy, and most importantly, use the reactor for producing radioisotopes, radioactive isotopes of different elements that could be used in medicine. Well, there are a variety of different scientific topics that uh, are undertaken here at Oak Ridge today, um, not in any order of importance, but uh, uh, energy technology, for instance, and energy conservation is a major undertaking. Uh, how do we build buildings and houses that conserve energy rather than, than waste it? Uh, neutron science, going all the way back to the origins of the um, uh, graphite reactor. We now have the spallation neutron source, which is a, a major particle accelerator built here at Oak Ridge a few years ago at the cost of $1.4 billion. And uh, the applications of the spallation neutron source are immense. There are about, I think, four or 500 staff associated with the spallation neutron source. And when it comes fully online, a couple thousand visitors every year that will come here from all around the world to use the, um, uh, the facility. Uh, supercomputing. At various times, Oak Ridge National Lab has the fastest uh, uh, civilian supercomputer in the world. Uh, other times, uh, we'll be second or third on the list. It, it is a multidisciplinary premier research facility. Virtually any type of scientist, engineer, uh, or social scientist can be found here somewhere on staff. And if you need to undertake a research project that involves multi-disciplines, chemistry, biology, uh, geology, engineering, physics, whatever, you'll find those people here that can contribute to that research. And there are all sorts of unique pieces of equipment which are not available out there um, to the average researcher. And in various ways, those average researchers can get access to certain pieces of equipment here. So we've got a facility that is truly multidisciplinary, has the resources for undertaking virtually any kind of uh, computational or physical research activity that you can imagine, and uh, you know, has a, uh, an incredible history to it. You couldn't build something like this today uh, anywhere in the world.